lot of people are talking about X Defiant, uh, a new first person shooter, a breath of fresh air, feels like the old days. Um, and it feels really good and smooth, but I heard a lot of people struggling to get their aim on point. So I'm gonna do my best to help you guys out. And I hope this helps. All right, so to start off, a lot of people actually get confused on this. They can't find the settings because you don't press the start button to find them in like any other game. You have to click the right stick. So there you go. If you couldn't find the settings, it's right there. Um, let's just start from the top. Field of view. Personally, I like I like to have my field of view maxed out just because it makes the speed of the game feel a lot quicker than it actually is. And you see a lot more. You get a lot of information. Consistent. You don't want this on independent because what that will do is it'll make your ADS field of view zoom all the way in as if it was um, like a sniper or something. It zooms into the default uh, field of view when you have independent on. So I don't recommend having this on unless you like playing at long ranges. So I would say stay with consistent so it'll match the field of view that you have normally. Uh, ADS on hold. Um, I didn't touch the ADS sensitivity transition, but I wouldn't recommend changing this at all because it'll make your sensitivity feel different and all that and the transitionings. I, leave this on instant. Don't touch this. Melee during ADS. Um, I didn't really touch this. I haven't really used this in game, but uh, I just left it on yes. Uh, aiming interrupts reloads. I just turned that off. Uh, crouch behavior on toggle. You don't want hold because um, if you need to crouch and do multiple things at a time, like let's say you want to crouch and reload, you're going to have to hold crouch and press reload at the same time. So leave this on toggle. Uh, sprint behavior. I have that on tap just because holding it will kind of hurt your thumb. Auto sprint I have on to feel kind of like uh, Modern Warfare because they also have auto attack sprint. Uh, sprint interrupts reload. I have that off. You could you could reload cancel in this game, so you don't really need this on. Slide behavior on tap. Auto reload. Yes, I didn't really switch any of this stuff. Auto grab ledge. Uh, I turn that off because sometimes that'll get you killed if you auto mantle. So I have this off. Uh, walk behavior. I didn't touch. Uh, I didn't mess with any of the HUD or all of that. This is all preference right here. And then I'm not a mouse and keyboard player, so I apologize for that. This video is geared more controller, but um, you can take some of the tips that I give you and apply it to mouse and key, but this is mainly for controller. All right, now we get into the juicy stuff. I have default flipped, so I like shooting with my bumpers only because it takes longer for the game to uh, register your inputs when you're using the triggers. It takes longer, so I use the, the bumpers to shoot. Uh, stick layout default aim assist standard uh don't disable this if you're on controller don't disable this trust me the aim assist is not uh as strong on this game i think it's the perfect amount honestly for me it feels a little too strong so if you're feeling like your shots are like kind of weird maybe try knocking it down a little but um other than that don't touch this um aim response curves now if you play call of duty a lot you probably play on reverse S curve and what reverse S curve is, is the um, dynamic curve in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. A lot of people switched over to this response curve because it feels really smooth when you're aiming with the stick. But if you're an OG COD player, you probably play on standard. So if you want it to feel like the old Modern Warfare 2 days and Modern Warfare 3 days, try using standard. Uh, ADS multiplier. I have this a little higher. Just because I like to get flicks. So if you're a very fast paced player and you like moving around, I recommend bumping this up. Not to 1.6 unless you're a really fast high sense player. But I'd say keep it around like maybe 110 to 120. But um, it took me a long time to learn how to play with higher sense. So if you want to do that, go for it. But I recommend playing on just at least a little bit higher than normal um let's see don't ever invert your stuff you don't ever want to do that i play on 190 uh, that's probably a little ridiculous to some people but that's what i prefer honestly the sensitivity in this game feels a little slowed compared to other first person shooters so honestly 100 doesn't feel like enough for me but i'd say play around with the sensitivity bump it up a notch from what you usually use because the sensitivity in this game feels just a little bit slower than your normal first person shooter uh 
acceleration speed i didn't touch this i don't recommend touching this if you don't know what it is uh just leave it at default uh dead zones dead zones are very important dead zones make the game feel a lot more snappy and responsive but don't put this too low because you could get stick drift but basically what dead zone is is lowering the amount that you have to push your stick for the game to count it as an input so the higher you have dead zones the more you're gonna have to push for the game to have your inputs counted so have this lowered controller vibration you always want that off don't ever have vibration on uh if you're used to it i mean i guess but i I'd, I'd recommend not playing with controller vibration on it, it makes your hands feel kind of numb and tingly after and it might mess up your shots a couple times if you have uh, very low dead zones it might actually mess up your shots so now if you're on pc uh there's a lot of graphical changes that you could do to the game um i don't know if this is the same for console i know the beta is on console but this is mainly a pc thing so um reduced latency you always want that on uh it'll make the game feel a lot more quicker i don't know what dx12 render is but i'm assuming that it might upscale the graphics so i don't think you should turn this on but feel free to try it i honestly don't know what that does i have vsync off if you have screen tearing you might want to turn this on it will make your game feel a little more delayed but um if you have screen tearing you could turn this on uh frame limit i just play at 120 i could go a lot higher but uh, honestly 120 is what you really need for the quality of textures shadows and all that stuff i have it on low just because when you have your quality settings of low on this game it doesn't really affect the picture of the game it doesn't affect the quality so if you have it on high you'll kind of just have your pc temperatures go a little higher but if you want to not put too much strain on your pc always have your quality settings lowered always so as you can see here i have it all on low i have even the resolution scaled down a little bit sharpening i have on 10 keep that on 10 sharpening will make your game look really crisp uh, particle detail i have that on medium just because when you're shooting your gun and it hits like a wall if you have it on low the, the particles will look puffy so you might want to have this is the only one that you are going to want to have a little higher than normal but everything else i basically just have on low vegetation uh low high resolution sky textures you can want that off you're not even going to be looking at the sky so you're probably going to want to turn that off terrain quality i have it on medium just because i don't want my game to look like absolute trash but you could also have this on low it doesn't really make a big difference now i'm going to give you guys some of the loadouts i use honestly the m4 is such a solid gun uh i have it ranked up to level 62 already <laughs> uh and uh suppressors are huge in this game i think suppressors are um really really solid i think some of them might even be bugged you completely don't hear gunshots with uh some suppressors and i think i don't think that's intentional but if it is that's pretty broken so i think suppressors are the best muzzle uh, these barrels, I don't really mess with these. These are kind of preference, but um, for the M4 specifically, I'd say you don't really need one as it, it kind of makes a huge difference in the gun. So it's got a lot of cons, but a lot of pros to whichever barrel you're using. But for now, I just run none. The handstop front rail, that one I like a lot. The horizontal recoil is kind of easy to control, but vertical recoil is a little harder because you got to pull down on the stick with horizontal re recoil you could just kind of straight strafe left and right so that's why i always prefer uh making vertical recoil lessened rather than horizontal so i use the hand stop front rail for that optics the iron sights on this m4 are actually really nice but uh you can't go wrong with the red eye this one is the best optic by far on any gun so i always run this one and the game shows that there's no cons to having a optic on your gun so i'd say if you don't like iron sights at any guns always go with this one uh fast mags are huge if you have fast mags in this game you will be running through people so i always run fast mags on any game if you have sleight of hand use it uh rear grip i don't have any you if you want more stability and more recoil control you could go with one of the grips but um Honestly, the stocks are, I think, are going to be better if you're going for recoil control. So I have the precision stock. They have a lot more that are like build towards speed and whatnot. I feel like the ADS time and sprint out time is already so fast in this game that you won't really be punished if you're trying to have some recoil stabilization. So I go with the precision stock. 
Secondaries, I've just kind of been messing around with the secondaries, but the one I like the most so far is the Magnum. It's fast, it's strong hitting, and uh, I don't really have many attachments for it, but I just have a sight on it. I don't really use it, but if I need to, it comes in handy, so. Uh, for the for the, your lethals, EMP is actually really good. Um, if there's someone on a point on domination, they have a shield up, you throw an EMP at it, it'll take it down instantly. Um, it shuts down a lot of other people's ultimates like if someone goes invisible if someone's trying to heal it'll shut it down so EMPs are, are pretty good but if you want to go for a kill a quick kill I'd say run stickies stickies are really good or if you know how to cook frag grenades run these but uh flesh pangs they're okay in this game they're not they're not really uh gonna blind your opponent too much which is a good thing they're not completely broken but that also means you shouldn't really run it mines they're a little clunky right now in the beta um i wouldn't really run these just because sometimes it won't even deploy so by all means if you're running uh domination with your homies and you want to defend the point you can try running one of these but just keep in mind that it's a little bugged right now and it sometimes it won't deploy so i don't really recommend using this for smgs uh i think the mp5 is really good i have the this is just a skin on the gun you could see if i take it off this is just for the little free battle pass they gave um i don't have it too leveled up right now but i always have that uh, front rail on it and iron sights uh for the grip i just have grip tape and then a padded stock but uh, other than that not much to it i will say this though if you want a different gun than the m4 i'd use the acr it's not unlocked right away, but in order to unlock the ACR, you have to get 25 long shots with an assault rifle. So if you're not going to use the M4, the ACR is really good. It's got almost feels like less recoil than the M4 and it hits like a truck when you hit your shots. So if you don't like the M4, try to get those long shots, earn yourself the ACR and you'll probably like that one better. I haven't tried the P90 or MP7, obviously, because I don't have them unlocked, but the Vector is also solid. Only thing is that it has a really small clip and it doesn't have too much range. So if you're going to be using the Vector, you kind of got to be rushing all the time. So if you're a rusher, the Vector is really good. It's high risk, but high reward, as it says in the uh, description. But the MP5 is honestly an all around type of SMG. So I recommend the MP5 over the Vector. All right, for factions. Um... I don't know if a lot of people know this, but um, each faction has a passive ability. Not only do they have their little L2 ability, but they also have passives. So with, let's say, the Splinter Cell faction, uh, you press right here and you could view them. Their trait is that uh, they don't appear on mini maps, which is kind of freaking crazy. Uh, they don't show up on the mini map. That might be changed in the future. I'm not sure, but their passive is that they don't show up. So... Again, if you're a rusher, I think uh, Splinter Cell's faction is really, really uh, good. The Far Cry faction, uh, I think they disabled their their passive. They uh, they tweeted out on X Defiant's official Twitter account. They uh, tweeted out that they disabled the passive for the Far Cry faction. I don't remember what it was, but it must have been broken. So right now, this faction does not have a passive. Uh, Phantoms, they are. Their passive is uh, really good if you're trying to hold down some points. They have increased health. So from an ordinary 100 health, they are boosted by 20 points. So you have 120 health. So if you're trying to hold down the fort and uh, be an objective player, the Phantoms faction is a really good one to play. The Division faction. If you are um, want to get a lot of damage and put that uh, put the hurt on the enemy team and get you know tap them for your teammates to give support. They have a passive that has incinerary ammo and um it's a little broken at times it's kind of annoying to run into but it comes at a cost you lose range with any gun you're using so if you use this faction you have a passive trait that has a con to it so that's the only faction that has a con but the passive is also kind of good it's preference if you want to use this class so i'd recommend this faction echelon if you want to rush uh, the Far Cry faction is also good for rushing because they heal as their uh, L2. Um, the Ghost Recon faction is good for playing objective and helping out teammates. And uh, the Cleaners is also good for damage. They um, Their L2 is a, a Molotov, but you throw it on yourself so you kind of explode into a burst of fire and anyone that's around you will 
almost die instantly. So, um, damage, uh, rushing, rushing, and objective. Alrighty, I hope this video helped out. I'm not going to show you guys too much gameplay because I know you guys came here just for the settings. But I will have gameplay coming out of this game. And I will have tips and tricks on movement, on everything like that. Um, so, if you guys are interested in that, please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. But, yep, I hope this helped. And have a good one.